Praise the Lord. Welcome to Healing Word Church here in Bandera, Texas. I'm Pastor Andrew Alexander, and I'm so glad that you took time to visit us today. Well, praise the Lord. God is great, and he is greatly to be praised. I just got a few announcements before I even get started. I want to remind you to go to our website, healingwordchurch.org, and sign up for the newsletter, for our March newsletter. So sign up for that. And also, you can also go there to give into our building fund. I just wanted to remind you of this, and I'm going to probably remind you at the end also. Well, praise the Lord. I am so glad that you are with us today. Today, we're going to talk about wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. And, you know, waiting on the Lord is something difficult. You know, it's something that's very hard for a lot of people to do, even in today's society, is to wait. You know, we have a hard time waiting on things, you know, because everything is so super fast now. But we have to learn how to wait. God still requires that we wait on him. OK, so praise the Lord. So but like I say, this is something we're going to have to learn. You know, and this is something I had to learn also since I came to Texas. You know, I came from California and everything in California moves fast. Things happen quickly and, you know, and uh and, and everything was uh, constant and exciting. You know, things get done really quick in California because it was a city that hardly ever slept. You know, any day of the week, you can pretty much find anything that you want to get anything you want done. I mean, when I came to Texas, well, it, 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 it seemed to slow down. You know, I spent a lot of time waiting, you know, waiting for the move of the Lord for things to happen because I have to wait for the Lord because when I'm dealing with other people, I got to wait till God deals with the other people, you know? So when he, when he moves on the other people, then I can get things accomplished. You know, it, it was frustrating to me, but this was a lesson that I needed to learn. I needed to learn how to wait on the Lord. And I'm still waiting on the Lord for quite a few things. I have a few things before the Lord in prayer and I'm waiting on his provision you know, to take care of these things. So uh, through this time of learning uh, to wait on the Lord, I have found out that he is many things unto me. You know, waiting on the Lord, I learned some th stuff. You know, that in the rush of the past, I did not realize because of moving so fast. But now that I've been waiting on the Lord, I'm learning patience. I'm learning how to hear him even better. I'm learning how to trust him e even better. I'm learning how to not move until he say move. So there's a lot of things that I'm learning uh, from the Lord, waiting on him. So waiting on the Lord uh, was something, you know, that I usually see in older saints, you know, the ones before all this new technology and stuff like that. And there was, uh, through my grandmothers, you know, when I was growing up, uh, there was one that came down to Oklahoma you know, when I was in my teens, in my, in my teen. And my grandmother said to me, you know, she wanted me to go to California with her uh, from, Oklahoma, you know, from Oklahoma. You know, so I said, okay. So while anticipating to leave, I asked my grandmother, uh, when, were we, when were we going to leave? When were we going to go uh, to California? And so what she said unto me, excuse me, <coughs> So what she said to me, uh, we're not going to leave uh, until, you know, she hear from the Lord, until the Lord tells her the, to leave. And I being a teenager, I thought that seemed kind of strange, you know, to me. You know, wait, no, wait, you going to wait on the Lord. Let's just get up and go. Let's just get up and go and to California. Why well, we got to wait on the Lord? You know, but I didn't understand that, you know. But over the years, you know, I started to understand what she was talking about. And now I am in the process of learning to wait on the Lord for provision, for direction, for answers, for guidance, and all of my daily in endeavors. And I mean daily. It's not just for some big things, but it is daily, you know, seeking the Lord and asking the Lord about things daily that's going on in my life and waiting for him to give me an answer. Praise the Lord. I think it's a wonderful thing to wait on the Lord. I tell you, because when he talks to you, he tells you things that you just simply did not know. I mean, in our own mind, we would come up with a plan, you know, to try to uh, work something out. But God has a whole different way of working things out. 
I mean, he has a different plan, a different thought. He knows what's going to happen in the future. He knows how to get it accomplished. So that's why we need to learn how to wait on the Lord. Okay? Wait on the Lord. So I'm going to give you this one example that I, <laughs> I had. It's kind of, it was a short wait. But years ago, I had an old van we called Old Gray, right? Old raggedy van bought for $700, and it didn't have no seats in it. The, 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 gear, the steering box was messed up, and it had no heat, no air, no insulation. So in the wintertime, we, we had everybody had to put blankets on, <laughs> you know. And in the summertime, we would just burn up. Boy, we had to try to open up all the windows we can and, and make it, you know. But I'm going to tell you, that was a good running car. But anyway, I had a problem with the, gear, with the driving box on the car. So, you know, I said, well, I'm going to go to the junkyard and see if I can find a new drive box. Because every time I drive, it would get out of line. You know, and I couldn't figure out why. So I went to the junkyard, found an old van uh, that had a box on it. So I climbed under the van, got all my tools and everything, and I was trying to, uh, you know, get it loose. And I just could not figure out how to get it loose. I couldn't figure out how, you know, to get it off the thing. So I prayed and I asked the Lord. I said, well, Lord, uh, what, what can I do? What can I do to... Uh, get this thing off. So I, I sat there for a little while, laid under this car, and kind of waited for an answer from the Lord. And then the Lord told me, he said, kick it. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. You know, kick it. I said, kick it, Lord, kick it. So, okay, I said, okay, well, it don't hurt but try. So I kicked that doggone uh, steering box, and it fell out. And it fell out. Because I waited on the Lord, and God gave me his wisdom, you know, of what to do. Everything worked out fine. I didn't have to sit there for hours trying to figure out how to get this, gear, this uh, steering box off. See, that's the benefits of waiting on the Lord. I mean, his answer might be unorthodox to us, but it is the right answer to getting things accomplished. So let's go to Psalms 27 and 14. And it says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So God is going to, he's going to give you uh, courage, and he's going to strengthen you. You know, uh, when he says strengthen your heart, it, it, it will make you uh, more, more able to believe him when we wait on the Lord. Okay? So when we wait on the Lord, he gives you the ability to do something that frightens you. Okay? Because a lot of times there's some things that come up in our life and we're kind of afraid of, not sure what to do. So, uh, you know, so he's going to give us up some courage. You know, waiting on the Lord to strengthen your heart, uh, strengthen your inner man. Because that, what he does, he, he strengthens that, in, that inner person that you have. There are some things that challenges us each day and we need to trust and wait for our help to come from the Lord. You know, because, I mean, there's a lot of things to come up. It might be some financial situation. You're not sure how to get through this financial situation. You know, the Lord, if you wait on him, he'll give you an answer. He has the solutions to everything. You might have a medical issue, and, and uh, you don't know what to do. You know, they're saying you need surgery and, and all these things. But you, if you just go before the Lord and wait on him, he will give you the correct answer of what you should do. I mean, I'm telling you. Waiting on the Lord is the best thing that you can do. So in Psalms 37 and 34, it says, Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. Wow, praise the Lord. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. See, God promises you that when you keep his ways, the teachings of Jesus now I'm talking about, he shall exalt or raise you to a higher rank or position of greater power. See, you got to understand, when we wait on him, there are some things that the enemy have taken possession of, things that belong to the children of God, right? But you got to understand, God will remove the wicked out of their place to give us what is rightfully ours. This is called favor. Because we keep the commandments of the Lord, he favors us, over the wicked. Praise the Lord. Amen. Isn't that something? I mean, that's a good thing to hear. Amen. When we just obey the Lord and trust the Lord 
Praise the Lord. He give us favor over the wicked. Hallelujah. That's a great thing. So in Proverbs 20 and 22, it says, Say not thou, I will recompense evil or repay evil, uh, but wait on the Lord and he shall save thee. All right. And there are times in our lives uh, that we become hurt by someone and we want to get revenge. Okay. This is not the will of the Lord. We are to love those that do us wrong. Pray for them and allow the Lord to fight our battles. You know, that's what the word says. Don't worry about it. God will take care of these things. You know, when somebody come and hurt you, amen, you will see waiting for the Lord to do things for us is the is, is do things for us is absolutely against our nature. See, we don't like to wait on the Lord is it's against our nature and our flesh because we want to try to do it ourselves. But God says, wait on him and then he will take care of those things. You got to understand, however, it is the Lord's will for us to wait on him to provide the things that we desire for our life. This is the patience that we all must learn, okay, to remain in the will of the Lord. We got to learn how to be patient and wait on the Lord and uh, praise the Lord and let him do the things. I mean, we don't have to toil. We don't have to go into strife. We don't have to fight and all these things. If we just simply seek the wisdom of the Lord and just wait on him to do what he said he's going to do. Praise the Lord. It makes life a whole lot easier. Less stress in your life, you know. Less problems in your life. And you can get along with a whole lot of other people instead of fighting them. In Isaiah 40 and 31 it says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I mean, all these things God does, he strengthens us, man. He gives us energy. You know, he lets us last longer if we just wait on him. Amen. So when we wait for the Lord, he gives us many things uh, that are good for us. And I'll remember, God is only going to give you things that are good. He renews our strength. He helps us uh, to not get weary, you know, wore out, and not to faint or just fall down and quit, you know, when trouble, trouble comes our way. The Lord is our strength. He is the supply of all of our needs, everything. That's why we wait on him. Take your stuff, take your problems to the Lord, take your troubles to the Lord, and lay them at his feet, and then wait on him to give you an answer or to do what he's going to do for you. See, you got to say he wants to provide for you, but we have to learn how to wait. Wait eliminates mistakes and delays in the things that we are trying to accomplish. I mean, that says a lot right there, right? If we just wait on him, you won't make the mistakes. You won't have to repeat it over and over and over and over again. You won't have all these delays and everything. But if you wait on the Lord, he'll take you straight through without all these problems. Because I know there's a lot of things we would like to accomplish uh, in this life. But if we wait on the Lord, he's going to take you through. He's going to show you how. He's going to show you the easier way to accomplish, accomplish these things because you trust in him. So Psalms 123 and 2 says, Behold, as the eyes of a certain servant look into the hands of their masters, and as the eyes of the maiden upon, uh, upon the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God until that he have mercy upon us. And that's what we should ask the Lord. Lord, have mercy on me. You know, Lord, because sometimes I get impatient. Sometimes I have a tough time waiting. Lord, help me to wait. Lord, because I'm looking to you for all of my answers. I'm looking for you for the supply of all of my needs. And that's what God, he wants this. He wants you to wait. He wants you to wait on him. Amen. So that he can do these great things for you. Praise the Lord. I mean, that's just like any parent, any parent. You know, <coughs> excuse me, when my children were young, I'm going to say when they're young, when they were young, I delighted when they asked for things. You know, Daddy, can I have this? Daddy, can I have that? And I, I enjoy getting those things for them. I'm not going to say that when they're older. Sometimes when they're older, you know, but they need to provide for themselves. They need to learn to seek the Lord for themselves, okay? 
uh, when they were younger. And that's the way God is. We are all children in God's eye. So he delights when you come and ask him for things and wait on him to give it to you. See, the Lord, he wants us to have the best of everything. Uh, but this only comes through waiting on the Lord. That's the only way you're going to have the best of everything if you simply just wait on the Lord. If you don't wait on him, you're not going to have the best. You're going to have what you produce, okay? Whatever you produce, whatever your outcome going to be, you didn't wait on the Lord, that's what you're going to have. So we need to learn to wait on the Lord. See, in today's society, waiting is obsolete, you know, because we have everything. Because we can order things and uh, get it that very same hour. You know, things are delivered quickly, and, uh, and we have become accustomed to that instant gratification. I mean, everything on TV is right there. You can get everything on demand. And, and so we got that instant gratification. So in our society now, we don't know how to wait. We don't know how to wait for things, you know. Wait, you know, that's, that's why we have credit, okay, credit cards. That's why people get in debt because they can't wait. They can't take the time for the Lord to provide for them and to save that money, okay. A lot of times I have learned God provides a lump sum. Sometimes you might have to save for it for a little while, but still it is his provision. And, and if you just wait, you won't be in that debt. You won't be slave to that lender agonizing every month. Oh, I got to pay this bill. So, you know, some people get so much debt that they can't afford to even go out to eat because every penny that they got, they owe to somebody. You know, that's a terrible place to be. But if you learn how to wait on the Lord and let the Lord provide your needs, you know, he, you're still going to feel gratified, but it is delayed because you're waiting on God. So listen, you know, the Lord is not going to change. You're not going to make the Lord do anything faster. Or he's not going to uh, move faster for your ben benefit. You will have to simply learn how to wait on the Lord for the things that you need. You're going to have to wait on him. And I'm going to tell you, waiting for the Lord is best. See, today we run to the doctor. At the very sign of an ache of pain, you know, uh, instead of approaching the Lord and asking him to heal us. So that's the first thing. You know, the doctor has become our God is basically what it is. We get, we start hurt, hate, having hurts and, hurts and pain. First thing to come down, I got to go to the doctor. I got to go to the hospital. I got to go to the emergency room, right? Instead of thinking about the Lord. We don't think about the Lord. But I'm going to tell you something. Lord will heal you of everything that you've got. I don't care what it is if you will simply ask and wait on him, right? Because he will heal us. See, we wait for the healing. We wait for him. And I'm going to tell you, uh, uh, the Lord has always healed me. Remember, the Lord's healing is without side effects. There's no side effects with his healing. You can go take all these drugs. The doctor wants you to take anything. You've got all these side effects. And then you got to take some more drugs, and then you got to take some more drugs for all these side effects, you know. You don't need to do that because the Lord is your healer if you wait on him. Wait on him. I mean, since I moved to Texas, I don't have many afflictions in my body. And this is God. God, he taught me something too, just to come up and pray and wait on him, and he will heal you. Amen. It is his pleasure. It is his will to heal you of all that bother you. But you must ask him to heal you and then wait for the healing to manifest. You have to wait. You have to go through a little bit. Just wait on the Lord. Listen, during my time here in Texas, like I said, I've been having a lot of physical problems. And instead of running to the doctor, I have been taking my issues to the Lord and asking him to heal me and waiting. Heal me and waiting. Waiting for the manifestation of my healing. And every time he has healed me, sometimes it, it was in the first hour. Sometimes he'd do it quickly. And other times it took a few days. I had to go lay before the Lord a couple days at a time. You know, say, Lord, I'm still not healed. And I go lay before the Lord, say, Lord, heal me. But the end result was I was healed because I waited on the Lord. And see, this is what I want you to get from this message. If you wait on the Lord, he's going to encourage your heart. He's going to heal you. He's going to bring you through. He's going to fix your financial problem. 
And if there's any other situations or problems in your life, if you come before the Lord, ask him and just wait on him to give you the answer and to work it out. I tell you what, you will be more encouraged of the Lord, more trusting of the Lord than trusting than, than you are trusting yourself. Because that's what you do. You trust yourself. You believe that you have the answer. You, you believe that the doctor, the loan officer, all of them have the answers to your problem. What you are doing is making yourself and them God because they don't have the answer. All they can do is give you what they know naturally. And what they know naturally is always going to take you farther down the road of hurt, pain, or in, or in debt. So we have to learn how to wait on the Lord and how to trust him for everything that we need. Well, praise the Lord. Well, I'll tell you what, I give God all the glory. And what we're going to do, we're going to have a few announcements here at the end and, uh, and, uh, and go through the deliverance and healing, all that at the end. But uh, praise the Lord. I wanted to remind you, you know, uh, that this is Healing Word Church. And you can always go to our website to contact us. There's a phone number there. There's emails. You can go to our Healing Word Church Facebook. You can go to our Twitter, HWC SAC. You can go there. You can, you can go to a lot of places to get in contact with us. So take the opportunity, take the time to get in contact with us. You can also write us. If you would like to write us, you can write us. Letter. That would be nice to read a letter. But, oh, praise the Lord. But get in contact with us. Well, anyway, this is Pastor Alexander from Healing Word Church. And I want to say God bless. All right, so uh, praise the Lord. Like I said, we're going to talk about spiritual husbands and spiritual wife. And like I said, those spirits come in through fornication. It comes in through some type of sexual act, okay? And uh, it could be fornication, adultery, masturbation, fantasy when you masturbate and you fantasize about whatever you masturbate into. And also it can come through dreams because they can attack you through your dreams. And so... What it is, when you have dreams, the way that you recognize them is when you have dreams, uh, you are having sex in your dreams, you have sex with somebody or whatever. Sometimes they come as people you might know. I mean, they come as a, a familiar spirit. It might be somebody you've seen on the street that you was attracted to. They may come as that person, but they come to have sex with you. And when they have sex with you, you are married to them because the Bible says where two are joined together, two come together like a husband and wife. They come there together. They have, they get married. They have sex. They are one. So now you are married in the spirit is what it is. You are married to that person in spirit. More than likely you got some uh, rings on your fingers. You can't see them because uh, you are married to that person. In the spirit. Now I know a lot of you may say, "Oh man, that stuff is not real. That's far fetched. I ain't. I'm not gonna believe it." Well, if you are having sex in your dreams, then you know that this is true, right? They are coming to have sex. Sometimes they come. If it's you are so possessed of them that they come, they will do it in the daytime while you at work. They will have sex with you while your eyes is open. Okay. So, uh, but I'm telling you. This is that spiritual husband. And what they do, spiritual husband, spiritual wife, if a person can't seem to get married, okay, if you are 40, 30, 40, 50 years old, never been married, can't seem to get married, there is something blocking you from getting married. I mean, it could be other things like curses or whatever, you know, but if you are having these sexual dreams, they will not allow you to marry nobody else because you are married to them. They will run them people off. You say, oh, man, it's going to work out, and then they get ran off. It's because you are married in a dream, okay? So it's a lot of issues there that go on the spiritual husband and wife. So if you have this and you are asking the Lord, say, Lord, I want a husband, I want a wife. Lord can't give you one because you're already married.
but you're married in the spirit. Not in the physical, but in the spirit. You are married. God cannot give you anybody else. So that's what I'm saying. It's a lot of issues that go along with this. But one indication is you are having sex in your dream. They're coming to have sex with you in a dream. Okay? So what we're going to do in this deliverance, we're going to break that. First of all, uh, what I want you to do is to repent. I mean, there's something that caused this thing to happen. There's a root. There's an entry door. There's something that caused it. And so what it is, you had to have sex with somebody. So if you are promiscuous, you don't have, you're doing a fornication, you're doing adultery, you're masturbating, you're watching pornography, all these things, you need to repent. You need to repent of it. You need to repent and stop doing those things, okay? Because that is an open door for them to get in. And, you know, so you don't want that open door. So what you do is repent. Ask the Lord, say, Lord, forgive me for all my sexual deviantness, okay? Re repent of it right now. Get rid of it right now. If you want to get rid of these things sleeping with you at night, you need to repent unto the Lord. And ask the Lord to forgive you of these things, okay? Forgive you. Say, Lord, forgive me for what I've been doing, for what I've been watching. I mean, even the television shows, I mean, they go to them sex scenes and stuff. They like, cover your eyes, close your eyes, turn your head. You know, do what you got to do to not allow them to enter that eye gate because they will enter you, you know? So you got to protect yourself, okay? So once you repent of this, now we can do deliverance. Now we can tell that spirit to go, okay? So right now, spiritual husband, spiritual wife, I command you out of God's people right now. Come on, you say it. Spiritual husband, if you're a woman, say spiritual husband. If you're a man, you say spiritual wife. Say out in the name of Jesus. I command you to come out. I command you to leave right now in the name of Jesus. Out! Out of my life, out of my mind, out of my members. Come on now. Sometimes they will reside in your sexual organs. And if you masturbate, they'll be in your hands. Your hands will get stiff. They'll hurt. There's, you know, you're like claws. You hold your hands like claws. Say, out! Out of my hands. If you masturbate, say, out! Tell that spirit, out of my hands right now. Out! I command you to go. I command you to go. You don't commit adultery. Just say, out of my organs. Out of my sexual organs. Come on, speak. Out of my sexual organs. Out right now. Out. In the name of Jesus, I command you out. Out. Come on, tell it to go right now. Tell it to go. Say, you spiritual wife, out of my life. You spiritual husband, out of my life. Come on, tell it. Don't enter my dreams no more. I command the fire of the Holy Ghost to come against you. Out right now. I command you to go. The fire of God be against you right now, out of my life, out of my dreams, right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, say out. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So this is what I want you to do. <coughs> Excuse me. This is what I want you to do. When you go to bed at night, from now on until you go to the Lord, you ask the Lord, say, Lord, I want you to put your spiritual armor on me. Put your armor on me. That's the helmet of salvation. That's the breastplate of righteousness. That's the belt to uh, guard, guard your loins and put on your uh, shoes. Amen. So ask God, put on that armor. Now, I want you to believe when you ask him, he places the armor on you. So when you lay down at night, say, Lord, put your armor on me. Give me my shield and give me my sword so I can fight. Okay. And that is a protection when you lay down at night to protect your mind, to protect your heart, the belt around your, your loins and everything, you know, to protect you when you lay down at night. Because they're going to keep trying to come to you again to see if you will fall, to see if you're going to turn back and accept them. You know, ask the Lord to be, help you to be the fight in your dreams. Say, Lord, give me the willingness and give me the power to rebuke this enemy and fight when it comes in my dream. You know, because they will try to show up in your dreams. I'm telling you, even though you have went through deliverance, they're going to still keep trying for a little while. So ask the Lord to help you to fight in your dreams. Amen. Because it's not just over. It's an ongoing battle because 
Now you smell like it. Okay? You got the smell on you because the sin that you did. So they're going to keep trying to come back until they know for sure that you are not going to go for it. So you're going to have to fight. It's going to take some work. That spiritual husband. And then I'm going to tell you, once you once, since we done cast it out, now your life is going to change. Now you'll be able to find your husband. Now you'll be able to find your wife. Because now you are pure. Now you're not married in the spirit. Now you are a single person. And now you can ask the Lord, now, Lord, bring my husband or bring my wife. Amen. A man and a woman. And I want to explain this now. It's never, it's never no perversion. It's never two women or two men. He's not going to do that. Because the way that he set it up, marriage is between a man and a woman. Period. And that's the only thing that God's going to respond to. So praise the Lord. Amen. I believe that you receive your deliverance. I tell you, if you need to watch it over and over and go through the process a couple more times, do it. Do what you got to do to be set free from the enemy. Amen. Because I'm going to tell you, he has no respect for you. And all he want to do is bind you and make your life miserable where you can't sleep at night. You know, when he's coming in and raping you at night and all these things, you, he don't care about you. All he wants to do is take you where he's going. So praise the Lord. I pray that you receive something from the Lord. Amen. So I'm going to take a break here and then we're going to come back for healing. So God bless you. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, welcome to healing. We're going to deal with healing today. I want you to understand God heals everything. There is nothing too hard for God or nothing impossible for God to do. And I, I know sometimes we place limitations on the Lord. But I'm telling you, Father can do anything. And he does it through Jesus Christ. Okay. So Jesus is the healer. And I want you to understand that. So I don't care what the situation is. I don't care how difficult, how hard, or how insurmountable that your mind may, might make it. He is able to heal everything that goes on with you. Okay? He is able to heal you. So praise the Lord. So today we're going to talk about autism. We're going to talk about autism. Okay? I know people say, oh, man, God can't heal that. You know, that's the one thing that God is not able to heal. You know, that's not true because, you know, the Lord even showed me one night in a dream the spirit of autism. And, uh, and this spirit of autism, and I said, it's a spirit, Lord? He said, yes, it's a spirit. So, praise the Lord. Autism is a spirit, and it can be cast out. It can be cast out because there's, I'm telling you, there's nothing impossible for the Lord. Amen. So this is what I want you to do. Those who are going through autism may not be able to respond to this, but you parents or you friends who are, uh, you can stand in the gap for them for this, uh, for this healing, okay? And this is what I want you to do. I want you to put them in your mind, and then what I want you to do is speak to that spirit inside of them, all right? Don't, you don't, you're looking past the face. You're looking past the face and you're looking at the spirit of autism. And that's who you are speaking to. You are speaking to the spirit of autism. Okay. You're not speaking to the person. The spirit is in them. So you're going to speak past that flesh into their spirit, to their spirit of autism. And what you're going to do is tell that autism to go right now. 
Okay, so let's move on. Come on, say, spirit of autism, think of that person. Think of whoever that person is. Say, autism, I'm talking to you. Come on, say it. I'm talking to you, autism. I command you in the name of Jesus out of that person right now. I command you to leave that person right now. Autism, leave right now. Leave right now. Come on, talk to it. Say, leave right now. Any damage you have done in that body, I command that body to be healed right now. All learning retarded, retardedness or learning delays that that person has missed out on, I command that learning to, to uh, escalate right now. I, I, I command that learning to increase exponentially, quickly, that they will come, that they will meet up to their age. Whatever age they are, that they will learn quickly and come up to their age. So autism, go right now. We command you out of that person right now. In every form of autism, from the little, little bit is the leadest, leastest to the most difficult, we command you out. And we take authority. Come on, say it. I take authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Speak to that. Speak to that spirit. I take the authority in Jesus Christ that was given unto me, and I command you out, autism. I command you out. I command you out. I command you out. I command you out. Go. In the name of you. Come on. You see that? You see that autism in that person? Out. Command it out. Because I tell you, there's no distance, there's no space of time when you speak into the spirit. They hear when you speak to them right now. So autism, out, out, break loose, out. I command you out of that person right now. Command them out. If they don't speak, if they don't talk, I command you to speak and talk now. I command you to talk. I command you to think clearly now. That their spirit is gone. I command you to be whole right now. All things that are damaged and delayed. I command it to be whole right now. In the name of Jesus. Right now. Well praise the Lord. Amen. Well we thank God. Amen for what he has done. Because I tell you there's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing difficult for him. I mean every sickness. Every disease. Everything. The Lord can remove. He can Change it around. So praise the Lord. We give God praise. Amen. Well, we're not going to have no announcements here. Uh, well, yes, we are. I'll put them in. <laughs> I'll put the announcements in. But anyway, praise the Lord. We give God glory. And uh, we thank the Lord for you being with us today here on Healing Word Church. And uh, I pray that the Lord gave you what you need. I pray that you receive what you need from the Lord. And uh and I want to say thank you. Take time to contact us. Take time to let us know what the Lord has done for you. And give. You know, we surely can use your support. Uh, you know, because we have a building project that we're working on. Uh, and I want everybody to go sign up for the newsletter. Sign up for the newsletter because you'll find a lot of things in the newsletter. And uh, praise the Lord. Well, anyway, I'm Pastor Andrew Alexander. And uh, Pastor of Healing Word Church. And I will see you next week. God bless you. I got to edit anyway.